Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this super easy radiator cover. Now as usual the cutting list is in the description box below, so let's get started. So we're going to begin by making pencil marks on our front vertical strips, which is the pieces that you've got three of. So take those like that and then put all the other pieces to one side. And then on each of these pieces, we're going to do a pencil mark 2.5 millimetres from each end and 15 millimetres from each end. So turn the piece lengthways and begin with your first pencil mark 2.5 millimetres, which is 3 30 seconds of an inch, and then 15 millimetres, which is 5 eighths of an inch. And then do those same pencil marks from the other end of the wood. And then on the other side as well. And then we're going to join these up and use those for positioning the pieces and for creating some grooves as decoration. So turn that piece like that. Join that up. Always just make a really light pencil line. You don't want to be actually scoring into the wood with your pencil. And then once we've done what we need to do, we can erase the pencil marks. So do that on each of those three pieces. So what we're going to do now is score a couple of grooves down the front of each of these pieces just on the inside of those two 15 millimeter pencil marks, so in there. And this piece is just for decoration, so is optional. So begin by making a couple of pencil marks on that sort of first 15 millimeter line at four millimeters and eight millimeters. And that's five 30 seconds of an inch and 13 30 seconds of an inch four millimetres and eight millimetres. Turn the piece like that. And then you might need to use one of the other ones just to prop your wool up so that the wool doesn't tip off the edge of the wood. Line it up just below the pencil marks to allow for the thickness of your flat head screw driver, which is what we're going to use to score the grooves. So just very carefully without going over the line, just do a faint score. And another one. Hold nice and tightly onto your rule so it doesn't slip about. And then you can go in a little bit deeper. And the reason I advise just doing that faint score first is so that your screwdriver will stay on track. If you go in too harshly at first, then you may just sort of skid off across the wood. So just be really careful. You don't need to do it slowly, you don't need to rush at it. And then that side as well. Faint score. Then you can go in a little bit deeper. Like that. That just adds a nice little detail. But like I say, you can leave them plain if you want to. Or create a little detail of your own on there. So do that with each of those three pieces. Now take a little bit of sandpaper and fold it and then just work that into the grooves and you're sort of tidying up the groove but you're also getting rid of that little pencil mark that's sitting just inside the groove there. And try not to sand above your pencil line but it doesn't matter if you go a little bit above it. And then you can actually sand away those pencil lines, but leave the 2.5mm pencil lines at either end, which we'll need for lining up our horizontal strips. And do that with each of the three pieces. Just finish off by brushing those with a dry brush just to get rid of the dust in the grooves. So 
So just before we begin construction, we're going to prepare the front horizontal strips, which is these four pieces. So I take the first piece and we're just going to very gently round off each long edge just to get rid of those sharp edges and make it look a little bit more finished. So hold the sandpaper at a 45 degree angle and just sweep it along that top sort of front long edge. And don't go too harshly, we don't want to take away from the width of this piece, but we are just rounding off front edge and it just looks a little bit neater than just the square straight edge of the wood. So do that with each of those four pieces. Okay so we're now ready to begin construction and we're going to begin by attaching the horizontal strips to the vertical strips so that the top one sits just below the pencil line and the bottom one sits just above. So apply glue to each end of the first vertical strip. I'm going to do the bottom one as well. And then line up your first vertical strip with one of the lines on your cutting mat. And that just helps you to sort of keep everything straight, even though we've got our reference lined there. So press the first piece up against the first vertical strip. Good firm press. And the same at the bottom there. <laughs> My finger in the way. Okay, making sure you're lined up with those lines. And this is just to create like a little bit of a foot. But also with a radiator cover, you have those gaps so that obviously the heat will circulate. And then keeping that lined up with your cutting mat, bring in the central vertical strip and line that up too. So again, the top and bottom of those horizontal strips are below and above the pencil lines. <laughs> again, give that a good press. Keeping it all flat against your work surface as well. And then you can apply glue to each end of these next two. And if you only had room for a single radiator cover, or wanted something a little bit narrower, then it's these four strips that you would reduce the width of. And then obviously your top piece would also be shorter. So it's a really simple piece to adjust if you wanted it smaller. And then bring that final one in and again get it lined up and just give it a really gentle press. <laughs> Sometimes when you do this if you're a bit too harsh with it it will just sort of fold up and collapse. <laughs> I've done that many times. <laughs> so just be really careful as you're doing it. And then what I'm going to actually do is take one of those strengthening strips and just very carefully push that along my work surface so that it's not sticking. And that can be left to dry off for a moment. Then we're going to very carefully turn it over and attach our support strips just to strengthen that piece up a bit. So before we turn that over, I just want to erase the pencil marks, which will be easier to do whilst it's flat. So just using a piece of 500 grade, just really gently sand those away. And I'm supporting the piece as I'm doing that. Okay, so now very, very carefully just turn that over. And we're going to attach these strengthening strips so that they sit across the longer edges like that and overlap the side strips. And then it's just adding a little bit of strength to the piece. And just want to point out here that I'm using a piece of wood that's quite sort of badly marked. And I think that's where it's been actually cut at the suppliers and that sort of laser cutter burns. But this, this sort of project is a really good way of using up any pieces of wood that you don't really want to use on your furniture. If it's got sort of like a big knot in it or grain marks or like this sort of laser burns. Because obviously it's not going to be seen. So you just want to apply glue to one 
edge. And we're not going to measure or anything for this, we're just going to lay it across the three pieces. Like that. And then sort of try and place it in the centre of those pieces. And again, like I say, so you're overlapping by, it's probably about five millimetres I think I left at each end there onto that side. And then give that a good firm press down. Like that. And then the same with the one at the bottom. Again, give that a good firm press and that piece can be left to dry. We're now ready to attach the side pieces and the side pieces are actually going to sit on the inside edge of those vertical side strips. So the easiest way to actually attach them is to apply glue to the long edge of the side. Pop that back down and actually pick the constructed piece up and attach it like that. And that way we make sure we're getting the side nice and straight along the inside edge of the front. So I've got some spare pieces of strip here. So I'm actually going to use those to push the pieces together. I feel like I'm doing this a bit kek handed. I'm doing it the wrong way round really. So we're basically pushing the front constructed piece against the side. Using the strip as well will help you keep that square. If you sort of just very carefully pull the front piece against it, you'll have that angle in there. You can lay that down and that can be left to dry and then we'll do the same at the other end. So again, apply glue to one long edge of the remaining side. and then attach the front piece to it, making sure that you've got a flush line at the top and bottom. Give that a press and then again bring that spare piece of strip in and press that against the front. And then lay the piece down I'm also going to use strips to strengthen the sides. I think I tilted that as I laid it down. So this time apply glue to two adjacent edges. Like that. And then lay that in there. Again, so you've got a nice flush line at the top and bottom. and then press the side against it. You can bring your spare piece of strip in again to help with that. I think my strip is just overhanging a little bit at the bottom but it's flush at the top so what I'll do is when it's dried I'll trim that off. Again just using this to strengthen the piece up because we haven't actually got a full piece sort of with a back it's a good idea to use strip wood just to strengthen all the edges up and all the joins. That, and then we'll do the same at the other end. Like that. And again, pop that in there. Set it right down into the corner. Again, okay, press the pieces together. Use that one on the inside edge as well, just to really press that down. Like that. So slide that piece along your desk. That could be left to dry. And whilst that's drying, we can shape the top piece. So what we're going to do with this piece is round the long front edge and both side edges and on both sides of the wood. So hold it at a 45 degree angle and as you sweep it towards you, bring it into an upright position. Six sweeps should be enough just to start rounding that off 
and then you'll do it on the underside of the wood as well. And if you have trouble with your sandpaper not staying in position, you can actually use a piece of masking tape along the top there and then you can use both hands to round the piece of wood, which makes it a little bit easier. And then do the same thing at each end. You can then tidy that piece up in your hand with a piece of 500 grey sandpaper, just to really tidy up those edges. And what you can also do is just round over the corners along the front edge. We're now ready to attach the top piece, so we'll apply glue along the top edges of the cover. And I just very gently sanded that strip that was overhanging. So just make sure that you've got a nice straight piece first. You can just do that by standing it on a flat area of your desk, making sure it's level. like that and then lay that piece down so that the front is facing upwards and this is going to attach so that the straight edge is flush with the back and you've got an even overhang at each side so get it roughly into place like that and then check that you've got that even overhang and it will probably be about a, a millimeter and a half or one sixteenth of an inch I'm trying not to get my hands in the way but then you want to give that a good press so hold it onto the bottom of those strips as well. Press that down and give that a good press in the centre as well. And then just hold on to it and remove any excess glue. And then I'm just going to get a little bit of masking tape and put a piece over each strip. I'm just start with a piece down the middle like that. So tuck it around and then just Pull the top down like that, just being really careful with the sort of main body of the radiator. And then we'll do a bit at each side as well. One final piece. you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry remove your masking tape and then you may just need to do some gentle sanding to remove any pulls that the tape leaves and this piece is now ready for paint now for my piece I'm using this rust-oleum chalky finish furniture paint okay so let's make a start goes on so nicely as well and is a really lovely colour so the little sort of patch on the tin does look a little bit yellowy but it is really a nice sort of soft white almost an ivory again because of the quality of the paint you can probably get away with just giving this one coat although I do like to sand so I might just give it a gentle sand and then a, a second very light coat I'm going to be painting the inside of mine as well. Even though we'll have our fabric lining in there, you might still be able to sort of see into the inside depending on where it is in your doll's house. You don't want to be able to see any of the natural wood. So just give it a, a light coat on the inside as well. Don't forget to get around those edges of the strips as well. So that's the first coat of paint drying. When that's completely dry, I'll give it a gentle sand and then just apply a final light coat. So to create the panels, I'm using this Ada uh, cross stitch or embroidery fabric. And if I can just bring that close up and get it to focus in. Let me put my hand around there. Can you see that it's got a double thread? And this one I think is a 16 
count or 16 holes per inch. But I'm sure you've seen this before and it's sold in rolls or sheets so you could just buy a small sheet if you don't plan on using it for a lot of projects and this can also be used for making chair seats and I've used it before um, inside doors, sort of door frames to create a really nice little unit. So if you were to end up sort of buying a sheet then I'm sure you'd find lots of other uses for it. So you want to cut a piece that fits just inside the back of the radiator like that. So between your support bars and obviously from side to side. So you've actually got a bit of a border to stick it on the inside edge. Now I've given measurements for this in the cutting list, but do just check it before you apply any glue because you might need to just do a little bit of trimming. And I don't know if you can see there, but I just stuck my top support strip slightly wonky so that meant I had to trim off my fabric. So it can happen, so do just double check before, like I say, you apply the glue. Now, as to the colour, I thought I was going to have to apply some paint to this, but actually it goes really well with the antique white. If you were using, you know, a different colour, um, sort of like something that was a bit creamy and the white didn't look right, then you can apply paint to this fabric. So just almost sort of dry brush or you could even apply it with a sponge and then dry brush over the top but what you don't want to do is get the holes actually clogged up with paint so you've just got to be really light with it and I have done that before so I know it can be done and we're just going to glue this into place on the back of the cover there so let me get some glue on my card and I'm actually just going to apply the glue around the inside edge of the frame And you only need a small amount, this um, fabric will stick really easily to the wood. And again, I'm using my Gorilla Wood glue, works really well with fabric projects. Put a little bit down the centre there. Did I get it in that side? I can't remember now. Like that. And then you just want to drop the fabric into place. Gently press it down. Make sure it's not puckering. And there is the completed radiator cover. And I can't wait to try this into place. And there it is in place. And I'm just playing around with accessories there because I'm not going to have it blue out in the hallway but I think that looks really good. Now, I ha obviously haven't finished in here. I've got a door to build, or double door, and surround to build, and then I'll need to fit a skirting board along there. But what I'll do is I'll actually fit the radiator cover into place before fitting the skirting board, and that way it can sit right back against the wall. So that's something to have a think about as well. And if you've already fitted skirting board, then you could just cut a bit out of each side and fit the radiator cover around it. And with a lovely big mirror or picture above there, I think that would look really good. So that's it for today. Just a nice quick one, or quick for me anyway. <laughs> and I really hope you've enjoyed it and that this is something you'll have a go at. So take care and I'll see you again soon. Bye. <laughs>